everyone. This is Nick Diobertis teaching you financial modeling. Today, we're going to be talking about estimating the cost of equity in Python using historical stock returns. This is part of our lecture segment on the DCF model, focusing on the cost of capital side of the model. So we've already given a general introduction of the DCF model and its various parts. We talked through the enterprise value and stock value portion. And we also gave an introduction on estimating the cost of equity in general, kind of the conceptual framework behind it. So make sure that at least you've uh, seen that general cost of equity introduction before coming into estimating this cost of equity in Python. So we can go ahead and go over to the example Jupyter Notebook for this. All of these uh, materials are there on the course site as well. So uh, here's the Jupyter Notebook focused on estimating the cost of equity. So here, as explained in the prior video, we are using the CAPM model to uh, estimate this future cost of equity. And to do that, we're going to fit the model with historical data and then use the fitted model to then predict the future. So um, the first thing that we're gonna do is read in the data that we need to use. So I provided this price data file, um, which has the price on the market portfolio. That could be something like an S&P 500 or Russell 2000 or uh, some kind of index which captures a large portion of the market. And then we have the price of the asset or stock that we're interested in determining the cost for. Um, and we have uh, 101 different prices here for each of the two assets. So now that we've loaded in, this data into the data frame. Now we can go about calculating the returns because we have prices, but we need to work with returns in the model. And so the return on a stock or any asset is just the percentage change in its price, new minus old over old. Um, and thankfully in Pandas, we don't even need to know that. <laughs> There's a formula for percentage change, though hopefully you do know that. Uh, but we have this percent change method on the data frame. So you just do dot percent change, and that's going to do that calculation for you on every row of every column. So that's it's really nice when you just have a data frame full of prices, you can convert it into a data frame full of returns with just a single command. Um, and you'll notice that the first row here has these NANs. So NAN means not a number. It is the representation for a missing value in Pandas. So this is just saying that there was no way to calculate the these values because the percentage change is new minus old over old. And for the first row, we don't have any old. We only we don't have any prior price to look at to calculate the return. And so there's no return for the first period. Um, but we do get the returns going all the way to the end of the data set just fine. So in the CAPM model, uh, we have this market risk premium portion here, the return on the market minus the risk-free rate. And so we're going to need to calculate that in order to run the regression because we can think of a simple linear regression in this format. Um, and so here the uh, rate on the market minus the risk free is becoming the X in this equation. So we need to just calculate that first so that we can use that as the X. So uh, we're just gonna assume here that the risk free rate is 3%. Uh, another approach here is to actually collect data on treasuries and use historical treasury rates as the risk free rates, and then it could vary in each period. Uh, but for simplicity here, I'm just going to use 3%. Um, 
which is quite high in 2020, but more a more normal rate in normal times. Um, so to come up with that uh, market returns minus first free, well, we just take the the market market portfolio return column and subtract the risk free, and we can save that into a new column in the data frame. And now we have this market risk premium column, which is just the market return minus the risk free. And be careful about your units here. This is a percentage, and so it should be in decimal format. So now we have the setup that we need in order to go and run the CAPM on the historical data through an OLS regression. So to run a regression in Python, we can use the stats models package. So here uh, is kind of the standard convention for the import. So most code samples you see online are doing this. Import stats models .api as sm, and then we use sm dot for everything. Um, and it's very important that you uh, include the constant in this regression. With stats models, you do have to explicitly tell it to include the constant. Um, because if you look at the format of the CAPM, the risk free rate here is the intercept or constant. And so if we estimated it without, then uh, we would not be appropriately estimating the CAPM. And so we need to have that intercept. Um, and so we add that here to the market risk premium. And the Y is going to be the price of or the returns on the stock. And then we can estimate the model. Um, but the Lotus, as was already there, uh, we have this missing data error coming up. Um, that exogenous, which means the X variables, uh, contains either infinity or missing values, which, of course, we do have missing values. We saw that before the first uh, row has missing values. And stats models cannot directly just work with those missing values. So what we have to do is drop those missing values. Uh, so this drop na command on a data frame is going to remove any rows which have missing values. And there are options on it. You can say uh, the fault is if there's anything missing in the row, it will drop it. You can also do how equals all. And then it's uh, only if everything is missing, will it drop it? But here we do want any because, which is the default, because uh, any missing value is going to mess up the estimation. So after dropping, and you can see that the first row here is what the second row was before. Um, we have just eliminated this first row because it was all just missing values. So, and then we saved that back into the returns data frame. You do have to assign it back, otherwise it's not going to take effect in the original data. Um, so now that we have removed those missings, let's go ahead and try this regression again. And this time it works just fine. So we see all the standard uh, regression summary output, all the fit statistics. And then here is what we're really interested in. The coefficient on the market risk premium is the beta, which was that main parameter that we're trying to estimate through this approach. And we see here that the beta is 0.8338. So this is uh, generally less risky than the overall market in terms of systematic risk. Um, so we're going to want to use that beta in a calculation. And in stats models, we have this uh, results.params, which is a series and a series of the coefficients. So we've got the constant. And you'll notice that this estimated to be uh, very close to our 3% risk-free rate. So that's a really good sign that it came up as 3%. It should not be too far from uh, your risk-free rate. 
and then uh, we've got the beta here as well. So we can pull the MRP uh, coefficient out of that, which is the beta. So then just saving that into a variable, now we've got beta into a variable and can use it to estimate the future uh, market return, or sorry, to estimate the uh, cost of equity going forward. Um, so again, the CAPM formula, now we've estimated it and gotten the historical beta, and we're going to assume that beta applies in the future as well. And so now we want to plug that beta in uh, along with the projected risk-free rate going forward and the projected market return going forward to multi ultimately come up with the cost or uh, rate of return on this stock. So we know the beta. And we can just assume that the risk-free is going to be the same as it was. So then what we do still need to get is the market return to plug in here. So we can just take an average of all the historical returns and use that as an estimate for the future. Now, you can definitely adjust this. Um, that would be kind of like the baseline case to just take it as it was. But then if you think uh, a recession is coming up or we've just entered a recession, then it could be lower than this. You could adjust it downward. If we're an expansion economy, uh, then you could adjust it upward. And certainly with uh, some kind of uh, sensitivity analysis or scenario analysis or Monte Carlo simulation, you can vary these kinds of things to understand uh, what's going to happen to the cost of equity, cost of capital, ultimate value of the stock, when uh, we change our assumptions about what's going to happen in the future. But here we're just going to use the historical, assume that that is going to apply in the future. So then we can go ahead and estimate the model to get the uh, cost of equity going forward. So all we do is just plug everything into the left hand or right hand side of the model. Again, assuming this uh, epsilon is zero. Uh, so we're going to plug the risk-free plus the beta that we estimated times the market return that we estimated as the average of the historical minus that risk-free again. And then we calculate that and we get the overall cost of equity that we can go and then use in calculating the WAC, which will ultimately let us uh, do the discounted cash flow valuation of a stock. Um, so that's what's involved in estimating the cost of equity in Python using the cap M. And then if you wanted to use a different model other than the cap M, uh, such as maybe like a Fama French three factor model. Um, the only thing that would change here is when you, uh, you would have to collect data on whatever factors you want to use, and then you would, uh, include those and the regression, as well as other x variables. And you would also estimate the coefficients on those. And then you would also have estimates of those factors uh, going forward, which would probably be based off of um, averages of the factors historically. Uh, and you could adjust those. And uh, then you would just plug everything in here at the end. So the approach is going to apply no matter which type of model you're using, you just need to change a couple of steps a little bit to apply it with different stock pricing models. So that's everything involved here in estimating this in Python. In the next video, we're gonna come back and cover handling it in Excel. So thanks for listening and see you next time.